And now, here's your host, Alessandra Torresani. Devin Simone, welcome to Emotional Support. I'm so, so, so thrilled for you to be here because I'm such a super fan of yours from watching you on my favorite show, the Today Show with Hoda and Jenna, my gals. I feel like I'm like friends with them. And I already am obsessed with you because you came on here and you said you have such a soothing voice. You should be you reading, do. Like, reading like morning audiobooks <laughs> or something. And I was like, well, I usually hear other things. So we're already off to a really fantastic start this morning. <laughs> it was so relaxing. You guys don't understand. As soon as I got on this call, I was like, Oh, wow. She's just such a great, like soothing uh, voice and energy. So yes, you do. I stand well, by I that. Will, I will take that. Devin, <laughs> I'm so pumped to have you on this podcast because um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the show, but um, I'm an actress and I live with bipolar one disorder. I'm very open about mental health, about mental illness, and the importance of just being stigma free and talking about this, right? Mm -hmm. And I've had a few people on who are dating experts and relationship experts. And we've talked about the importance and significance of being mm -hmm. able to share your mental health stability or, you know, how dating and relationships can cause instability. And so I think it's mm -hmm. so important for us to keep this conversation going. And I've never had a relationship expert or someone that has interviewed and, and you know so many people like you have and and been part of so many cool TV shows and and stuff like that. So, Devin, what I first want to know is how did you even begin in this career of being a relationship expert? How does one how does one start that out? You know, like I just you imagine know, you as a, like a, like a fabulous baby being like, you know what? I'm in a, like in kindergarten, like being like, you should be with this person, and you should be in the corner over there, and you should be doing this. <laughs> That's what I would like to not, assume. <laughs> you're not that far off. Uh, as crazy <laughs> as it sounds, like it wasn't a kindergarten per se, uh, but it was middle school. I think the the real catalyst was that my parents divorced when I was very young, when I was two and then mm. remarried other people. And that sort of became, you know, they say we all have our life's question and that so much of what we do for the rest of our lives is towards like finding the answer for that. Sure. Um, or sort of inspires the journeys we go on and the things that we do and the things we sure. spend our time doing. And for me, it was about what makes a healthy relationship versus not like how people interact, how they connect, why mommy and daddy's relationship didn't work, but their new relationship seemingly work. All of that just became such a passion of mine. And not even because I really wanted them to get back together more because I was just curious. Uh, right, and, right. um, and that evolved. And yes, I was a hundred percent giving dating advice to my teachers in school and which no. is highly inappropriate now. And, uh, but yeah, they'd let me and, and classmates and things. And, you know, then ultimately it led to, uh, you know, uh, advising others and TV show. And now years later, you know, I'm a matchmaker, uh, a dating and relationship expert. And if you'd asked me as a child, if I thought this is what I'd be doing, I would have said no. But if you'd asked right. some of my teachers, like I'm actually still friendly with some of my guidance counselors from way back in the day, they follow me on social media. And if you'd asked them, uh, they would a hundred percent say, yeah, that tracks. That makes sense. Oh my gosh. I feel like, so I'm a new mom and I, I feel like now that I see all the kids that come over to the house and we have like we host mm -hmm. music class at my house and all this stuff. Love that. I feel like I can see in these like 15 month to 24 month old like kids mm -hmm. what their personalities are. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I could see this person doing this. Like there's one baby that I'm like is for sure gonna be a stand-up comedian and like mark my words is gonna be a famous. And I found out that her grandmother actually was a famous stand-up comedian and I didn't really? even know that. So I feel like as a teacher or like a guidance counselor, like yeah. you could totally like suss that out and be like, oh yeah, this one, is, Devin's going to be like a huge like expert in this. Like I, I feel like I could totally see that. That's so but great. Now I want to know so about cool. this baby in years, by the way. I'm going to check in with you. I want to see I know, if right? they make it to the stand-up career. Right? That's I, so no, cool. I'm telling you. And I, if it happens and I say it to the mom all the time, the mom's like, I don't know. And I was like, no, trust me on this. I just, I know in my gut, this is like the next like stand up, like comic genius. Um, but no, that's so, it's so cool. And so special that, that this is something that you did when you were younger and, and that you thrived at. Now I have a question now that you're being very open and honest about, about, you know, your parents getting remarried at two, mm -hmm. was that something that was, cause I, I'm a, I'm a child of divorce, but my parents divorced mm -hmm. when I was in high school. So for me, I was like very okay. aware of what was going on. Yeah. And, 
there was no, I never saw them fighting, but I knew that it mm-hmm. was not a happy situation and that they were mm-hmm. better apart than together. When you're mm-hmm. two, you kind of don't know any different, right? So was right. it weird for you? Like what's kind of the experience of seeing from a relationship side when you're so young with divorce? You know, I, I tend to take things, it's weird because my job is so nuanced, but I tend to take things at face value. I think that's the core of who I am. So even as a child, I think it was very much like, okay, one plus one is two. So like mommy and daddy didn't work, but now they're both remarried. So this should work, but why? Like, what's the difference here? Like, why is that supposed to work? And uh, you know, I, I'm fortunate, especially now because they're dear friends. And so I love oh. that I don't have to choose in terms of dynamics. We all do holidays together. Like it's all, oh, that's so, uh, oh my God, like how nice. Big, I love that so much, but it, but it wasn't always, you know, when I was younger, they definitely didn't, they got along for the sake of me, but they didn't really get along. But yeah, I don't know that because it's all I know. I don't know how much it informed or shaped uh, any sort of like levels of trauma, if you will. Sure. But I do know that it, that it really was sort of my question of why, like what would happen because I was so too young to understand. And they did a good job of hiding. Like, I don't remember them fighting or anything like that. Then it was sort of like, well, why didn't this work? You know, you have two people, they both love me. They made me, they seem smart and great. People love them. Why did they not work yeah. together? You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, you know, I, I think it's nice. I don't know if you have a relationship with the, you know, your parents, significant others, but I think it's kind of mm-hmm. fun to have so much family. I, I'm, I think the more the merrier, I think is always mm-hmm. the more love, the better that, that it is. I think in the long run, if that's the case, I Absolutely. hope we get along with them because sometimes. We- <laughs> yes. No, I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so then how does one go from being like, this is what I, I'm born to do to actually being a relationship expert and being being able to use those skills, you know, cause I mean, I guess, I don't know, is there a college degree that you can get to, to <laughs> learn? Because honestly, I truly think that there should be because there is so much to learn and it is all about the psyche and about understanding mm-hmm. who people are. You know, it's funny because in, you know, also as someone who suffers with ADHD, but wasn't diagnosed until like later years, wow. I, the classes I was most drawn to, the classes where I would turn my homework in on time or be early were always like psychology, sociology, and right. sex ed. Like those were the Amazing. ones that the teachers didn't have to tell me. And again, yeah. it wasn't intentional in the sense of I ever thought no. I'd be a dating expert. No, 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 no. no. But that's just where your passion it, was. That's where my passion was. And so right. those were also the books I didn't return. Much of my parents <laughs> returned. So we paid for them out of pocket, <laughs> didn't get reimbursed for that. Still have them under my bed at my parents' house. But uh, it was just it was so fascinating to me. Um, and I really just had all the way through college, like I really had a thirst for it. And I don't know that I intentionally went into this role. It just was such at the mm. core of who I was. So look, you know, I dated a lot when I was younger. I also was an early adopter of all the different dating things and sites and an early adopter of Tinder, which I, I love the way that they were really broke barriers in terms of how we connect because it allowed me to satisfy my curiosity of getting to know and understand people better around how they interact in relationships, what they're looking for, like outside of your general couple mile radius, which traditionally before we had a Tinder was kind of what happened. People tended to get married or get in relationships and the people that were closest to them, you know, whether it be school, work, uh, religious place of worship, you know, that's kind of where meeting people and and they really sort of just kick the door wide open, which then further allowed me to explore, get to know other people, learn more about the dynamics in real time and yeah. and how dating has shifted and is continually shifting and evolving as we do as people. Right. Well, and it is. I mean, my grandparents, I mean, they met at a church dance. I mean, like- Love that. Like- how adorable is that? And then, you know, yeah. my parents met at a place of business, mm-hmm. but it's so funny how things have evolved so much. And, you know, I married and my husband and I met um, at a Halloween party with mutual friends mm-hmm. and we met mutual times. But it's funny because the final time that we met, you know, uh-huh. that we actually started talking was on a dating app that we were both oh, beta really? testers for. Wow. And it's funny. We'd met a couple times before. And so we knew yeah. of each other and we had already mm-hmm. like- we never had each other's numbers, but we had had each other's numbers through other friends and had been talking. Did but you flirt the other times you guys met? Like, or was it no. just friendly the other times? He, that well, you he all... did. He was oh, like okay. really trying hard. Yeah. 
He he was given all that he had. Okay. Um, okay. I like to blame it on the fact that I was I was uh, dressed as Lilu from the Fifth Element, which was the Cannot. outfit that was the bandage Cannot. outfit. So I was like kind of yeah. naked, and so all these guys were hitting yeah. on me, and I was like, "That's so gross." Um, but and we had met multiple times mm-hmm. throughout a whole year, um, and mm-hmm. I just kept brushing it off. Like I wasn't ready to date anyone. And then Mm -hmm. I was a beta tester, um, on, uh, an app and Mm -hmm. he was a beta tester and there were 50 guys and 50 girls. And he was one Mm -hmm. of the only guys that I didn't know personally, like as a really good friend. So I was like, Oh, this Mm -hmm. is funny. Like I know who you are, but I guess we'll just like talk a little bit. And that's truly how it it came together was from a Halloween party to being a beta tester. Um, and it's such a different world, right? I mean, that was his first time ever like on an app. Yeah. I had never been on apps before. I was like, this is so bizarre, you know, but it was, yeah. it was kind of funny. And I was like, oh, this is fun. You can create this persona. You can post these pictures. You can have music in the background. Like it was really fun and cool mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and different, you know, mm-hmm. but I've had so many friends have success stories on all the different apps. Absolutely. It's, my friend did a whole, um, I forgot what magazine it was in, but she was one of the first, like not first success stories, but she was a huge success story in the sense where she met on Tinder, her husband, it was their Mm -hmm. first date uh, Mm -hmm. for each of them, like meeting and they got married. They have three kids. Like you, it works. It really does work. If your intention is in it, you know, exactly. If your intention, I completely agree with you. I was scrolling through Instagram the other day and uh, this uh, amazing talented woman that I follow, she's like, She sings in the stairwells. If you know her, her name is Lauren, I think. And she's so talented. She's like the voice of an angel. And her get her thing started because she would go in a stairwell and sing, but it would sound literally the most angelic thing ever. But she's just celebrating an anniversary with her husband. They have a newborn baby. And she was like, thanks, Tinder. And they met on Tinder and like they are just thriving as a couple. And it's so beautiful to see. And so it's cool. But another thing that's cool about Tinder too is like, it's a place where you can create the kind of relationship that you want, right? Like you get to make your own love story. So for people who are looking for that long-term lifetime partnership to get married, it's a great space. But Mm -hmm. for those who are just dipping their toe or aren't quite sure what they want, maybe they want a short-term relationship. They want long-term relationship. They want, it's a place for that too, which I really Mm -hmm. love. I mean, not only is it the most popular dating app in the world, but I love that they really I don't think people understand the intention behind just all of the different things and the initiatives that they do and that they really tried to create a space for everyone kind of no matter where you are so that it feels more organic to you and not like you're getting pushed in this sort of cattle call of like a swipe and all of that other stuff. Like I, I, it's, it's a really, it's amazing in that way. Well, and I think it's like, like we said, you know, it's what intention you set for yourself going into Mm -hmm. dating. I interviewed this girl who was so amazing and she created this at this website app. Um, I'm sorry, an app. And then she also has it as a notebook um, where she basically was like analyzing all of her dates, like every date that she Mm -hmm. went on. And she was like, you Mm -hmm. know, I would go on these dates with guys that I would be like, oh my God, I have butterflies for. And if I really did analyzing and I really like wrote down the feelings, like, did they show up? Were they on time? Mm-hmm. Were they present? Did they, you mm-hmm. know, do this? She's like, the ones that I didn't get the true butterflies for were mm-hmm. the ones that added up to a 10, you know? And she was so, she was like, you know, you really just have to sit with your thoughts. Think mm-hmm. about this. Like be like, what do I want? What am I going into? Am I going in for a hookup? Am I going in for a long-term right. relationship? Am I going mm-hmm. in for a long-term partner where I want to have a baby mm-hmm. with? You know, you really have to set the tone before, before you do that. Now, before you got involved with Tinder, you know, you, like I said, you are on my favorite show, Hoda and Jenna. So you're, <laughs> you're the expert. So I've heard you give such great advice, you know, which I'm going to ask you about some advice, but you also were on a show called the challenge. What was the was. challenge for those who didn't know what that was? Yeah. So it's still going on. The season 39 is about to premiere. Oh um, my God. 39? 39. I know. Right. Wild. Let Literally me just think wild. for a second. Wow. How do I, <laughs> wow. That's a good show. I know. I know. 39 seasons. And that's not even including all the spinoffs that they've done because they've done several spinoffs. Wow. Um, you know, they, they talk about six degrees of separation. I feel like the challenge really puts you at about two degrees now because so many interesting and dynamic people have 
been a part over the years of that wow. franchise. Right, that it's, right. It's, um, but yeah, for those who don't know, it's a physical competition show. Uh, it started years ago. It was one of the early competition shows. It really sort of pioneered the way in a lot of ways. So it, was a, it started as a spinoff of a Road Rules in Real World, um, right. at where they would pull people from both of those shows, and then they would go and compete in sort of these sort of crazy or like wild physical competitions um, uh, for a prize money. And it has continued to evolve. And it's all about like, I think at its core, it's really about pushing yourself um, beyond your wildest dreams. Like I still host the official podcast for it with CBS and MTV. And so we get to interview current contestants and former contestants and really hearing how it's transformed their own belief in themselves mm. is, is very, very magical. I highly recommend binging. If you ever find that you're on a very long flight or you have the time, uh, it's, it's, fun to look be- look at it and go, oh, I wonder if I could scale the side of that volcano. Right? Or I wonder if I could run across that semi while it's going 50 miles an hour on a highway. But it's also interesting to see these people, especially this year, we see people talking about mental health and mm. self-doubt and imposter syndrome and how they overcome that within the house and, you know, learning to dance with your fear. It's just really, it's, I'm so fortunate to have been a part and to still get to be um, connected by hosting the official podcast and kind of in the challenge family. And And I'm sure that so many of those people, because they, I mean, what's so wild about the real world is I had a friend that was on it and he was on the, uh, Paris, uh, Paris one Mm. years and years and years ago. And he was really, really, really young. And, you know, we, we just talk about like how wild that was. Like he was, I think he Mm -hmm. was like 19 years old. This is who I am. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I, I, what a wild time to be on one of the first reality shows, right? We were really open to seeing how people were. So I'm Mm -hmm. sure a lot, and maybe not, but I I would assume that a lot of the people from the real world and road rules ended Mm -hmm. up dating each other because they were the only ones that really understood like what they went through, like, and could share these experiences. Yeah. But I mean, it's shared experience, right? You know, it's, it's shared experience. I do say in the challenge house in particular, I called it camp syndrome. You know, you go to camp, and it's you're limited to all that's there. So people who you may not have been attracted to in the real world, you're suddenly attracted to right. while at camp. <laughs> and then you get back into the real world and you're like, oh, that's not a great fit. Um, but I feel like is, that was a lot of COVID relationships. <laughs> the, yeah. That too, that too. Um, But yeah, no, there definitely is a lot of connection. We see it this season. We see it pretty much every season. And there are strong relationships that have come as well. It's funny, when Mm. I was in the Challenge House, long before, you know, I was Tinder's resident relationship expert and long before I had my own show on dating and matchmaking, we used to do segments just with the cast in the house, we could, we'd call Dr. Devin, which by no means am I a doctor. Uh, but we would, I would talk to them about whoever was hooking up in the house would come and sit on the couch and wow. we would talk, sort of do like dating and relationship yeah. counseling in the house. Um, sometimes with the whole group sort of sitting and watching almost all a, a talk show and then sometimes just privately, but it was really fun and uh, special and yeah. interesting because even in an environment like that, you know, our, the quality of our relationships directly impacts the quality of our lives, I believe. Mm. And it doesn't mean you have to be in a romantic relationship. It could be any type of relationship, sure, friendship, sure. familial, whatever. Um, but it does have a great impact. And so um, being able to get to be a part of people's stories in that way. And then also, you know, I'm so fortunate and love, and I know I keep sort of talking about it, but my connection with Tinder, I'm so fortunate to be a part there because look, as, as the pioneers, the leaders, they have so much great data and insight. And so I'm able to, you know, speak to them as an expert and, you know, our missions align and, and I love their initiatives and being able to be involved with that, but also just learning from all of the, the millions of people that have utilized the app in terms of what's working, what's healthy, Mm -hmm. what's, you know, the makings of a healthy relationship versus not so that, whenever I'm asked or whenever possible, I can share that with other people too, so that they can, you know, I would say anybody can be in a relationship. It's the healthy relationship that you want. Like it's not a flex to just have a a partner, but to have one where you feel that you can be your best self and you're inspired and loved. Anybody who wants that absolutely deserves it. And um, while it's not a binary thing, I do think there are some indicators, thought processes, processes that can lead to a better outcome. So let's talk about that. I think that's an amazing segue. Like what is something that 
someone who's listening right now, they're looking to be in a relationship, but they, Mm -hmm. you know, have had these failed relationships and they're looking for the healthiest thing that they could possibly do, or Mm -hmm. maybe like how they could present themselves on the dating app, for instance, like what are some healthy things to, you know, to, to show who you are and like, this is who I am on the dating app. And then to continue keeping a healthy relationship, what are some things that you've learned? You know, I think the first thing that you can do, whether you're getting back on a dating app or whether it's your first time, is make sure you're carving out some time for yourself. Mm. Whether that means meditation, whether that means, you know, playing music. Like we just moved um, apartments. And so I finally got my bathroom set up and I took a very long, embarrassing long shower the other day where I just had music blaring and I had like my spotlights on. You were feeling and my yourself. Came in. Yeah. He was like, Full concert, full run. You know, we did an encore, but it was just such a good moment of clear, of just yes. stopping in the moment and clearing and like, you know. And you needed it. You yourself. needed that. Yes. Yes. And I think everyone does. And sometimes we get so busy in a world that's constantly fighting for our attention sure. and us to be doing something. It's easy to forget to be still and to make space for yourself. And I think I that's that. important before you start creating your dating app. Because then the more connected you are with yourself, that's when you can lean a little bit more Mm. into your intuition. Because I think a lot of times it's not so much that our intuition betrays us as much as it is is that we're not really hearing it because there's so many layers of distractions in between. And so I think that's the first step. I think the second one is be intentional. Like what I do love about Tinder is they've done things like relationship goals. And a lot of people don't know this because the app is constantly evolving. It's not what it was even when I joined it almost a decade ago, it's, it's evolved. And so relationship goals, you can say, I'm looking for something short-term. I'm looking for something long-term I'm looking for. And so that just helps a wow. filter, but it also helps you connect to people who are in line. Sure. Of course. Step, right. You want a shared goal. Um, and then even, you know, the different things of like uh, common interests. I love that they have like, like my dog is like my child. And Aww. so I love that they have, a, you know, um, you know, I want to have a dog or I am a pet lover or I'm not so much into pets. Like you can really customize it to you. The other thing is once you've taken time for yourself, photos, good photos. Mm. Now's a really great time of year. That golden hour hits just right. Go outside. You don't need a fancy camera. You can use the timer built into your smartphone. That's you can right. even have grandpa pop do it as long as you can hit a button. All you need to do is go outside. Okay. Find your light. So you don't want strong shadows. Find your light. Um, like going out in late afternoon is great or, or like closer just before sunset um, or early morning, like right after sunrise are pretty good right. times, but get some good recent photos, freshen them up. Even if you've been on the apps for a while, you're going to want to refresh those photos so that, um, you know, maybe someone who's back on the market is swiping and you're using the same photos that you were using three years ago. They might swipe past you thinking I've already seen this person, but you've grown. You're a new person. You know more now you're so feel free to like freshen that up even with the seasons. Mm. Um, and then think of your top three must haves and top three deal breakers because we don't have direction on where you want to go. You're not going to get anywhere. It would be like trying to catch a ride with a hit, like hitchhiking, Mm. but you don't know which direction you want to go. Well, Mm -hmm. they might be going north and your ultimate goal is south. Now, what the heck are you doing in their car going north for so long? Like that's going to help you. So you need to at least know the general, like the top three must haves. One I hear often growth mindset, which I am. It warms my heart that that is becoming increasingly common in terms of what people are looking for. Um, You know, intellectual curiosity is one I hear a lot. Someone who's just adventurous and open-minded and like Mm -hmm. wants to learn and try and do things. Um, I know that people are starting to better understand themselves, which is helpful. So like on Tinder specifically, we've seen that the term introvert appears 33 more percent than extrovert. Yeah, right? A lot of more people are identifying as an introvert or dare I even say an ambivert really, which is sort of the hybrid between. It means that you can go out and be an extrovert. You can socialize when necessary, but at the end of the day, you still recharge when you're by yourself. Whereas an extrovert gets that recharge from being out and connected with other people. And an introvert gets that recharge from being by themselves or sort of in uh, solitude. Mm -hmm. But generally a standard introvert doesn't love going out and about, whereas an ambivert can go out, can socialize with friends. Sure. But at the end of the day, it's still going to run their social battery to right. a point and they're going right. to need to come And they need to charge. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. I absolutely, I never heard that before. So thank you for teaching me that. I, I, I love that. Um, 
That's that's so fantastic. And I think it's so true because so many people don't know how to express who they are on social media, right? Because you think Mm -hmm. that you have to be picture perfect and that you have to have, you know, all of these qualities and you have to be a superstar to do anything. But the honesty, I think, is what the best part is, right? Is is Mm -hmm. learning that someone's an introvert and maybe that's why they're not wanting mm-hmm. to meet you out at a certain mm-hmm. place exactly. or around certain people for the first time, mm-hmm. you know? And mm-hmm. I think that that's, that's really special. I absolutely love that. Now, since I'm a new mom and I'm in a, ha- a happy relationship, so this isn't for me. So I just want to clarify this, but I have a lot of friends that <laughs> mm-hmm. are, that are, have young kids and are maybe mm-hmm. stepping out of their old relationships and are single mm-hmm. again, but mm-hmm. having kids. You must see that a lot with single parents. What is something Absolutely. that you could give advice wise to maybe someone who's newly single with a child and needing to step back into the dating world and is like, how do I do this now that I have a kid? You know? Yeah. I mean, you know, there's know that it's not hopeless. Um, know that there is no rush though. You can do it at your own time just because you see other people doing it or people might be telling you, oh, you got it. You're great. You should get back out there. You don't have to do it until you feel like you're ready and you can manage and you can balance because it is an, an extra layer when mm-hmm. you have this little one that's relying on you, who is your primary focus and you're trying to navigate that and someone new um, mm. in the picture. But know that it absolutely is possible. And once you get to a place where you feel like you have the support and community that you need in whatever capacity, whether that be daycare some of the time. So maybe even Mm. once a month, you can take yourself out or go out with friends or go on a date, uh, or whether it's you're fortunate to have family nearby who will watch, you know, the little so that you can take carving. I know the most selfless job ever is being a mom, but I do believe that one of the greatest gifts you can give your children is taking care of your emotional and physical well-being, um, because they're going to learn those habits from watching you. And they're going to also absorb that energy. Kids are so smart. So even if they can't cognitively understand what's happening, they can feel when mom is happy, when she's caring for herself and when she's not. And so I think if you feel like you're at a place that you're ready for partnership, then setting aside, you can start slow again, even one night a month to dip in, whether that means you swipe a couple times a week until you find someone you match with that you think, all right, hey, and you start with a phone call. Again, go at your own pace. You don't have to jump right in. You can start with a phone call. You can even do a FaceTime when the baby's down. So maybe that's the next step in the date. And then if you feel comfortable, you feel excited, then you guys make a plan for that one night in the month that you have. Mm -hmm. And if it's someone who's not understanding of your time limitations around having a baby, then maybe you guys aren't aligned with the total vision anyway. And wouldn't you rather know that before you're fully emotionally invested? Oh, I mean, I would. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I, de- I, I definitely would, and I, I, I'm a firm believer in that. Is, is, you know, even, pr- you know, with a baby now and without a baby, I, 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 you have to take care of yourself. You have to take mm-hmm. care of your mental health and your stability because you have to be the best version of yourself in order Absolutely. to give that to someone else and for them. Absolutely, you know, and you deserve that. You know, you deserve mm-hmm. someone to be the best version of themselves too. Um, mm-hmm. So same with when you have a kid, you have to make sure that everything is in order and that you're you're happy, they're happy, and then you add that 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 bonus into your life. And Absolutely. for you, you know, how did you find? love, you know, was it for, yeah. for, was, what were your like kind of boundaries that you could maybe teach someone else of like you expected X, Y, and Z in your life mm-hmm. in order to attract the best, the partner you could? Yeah. It's funny. Cause I feel like as a matchmaker, I get asked that all the time. They're like, did someone match you or did you match make yourself? Uh, and yeah, I met my husband on dating app and, you know, wow. so Tinder paved the way in so many ways and even, you know, life changing way for me. And, um, you know, in terms of that, ba- it's funny because when I first met him, I did not know he would be my husband. Like not even, we had such a great time. We had so much fun together, but it never even clocked Crossed in my mind, mind oh my that, that would actually be my husband. Right. Um, and so, yeah, it's in terms of what I was 
looking for or for my own personal must haves, I'd say a growth mindset is huge because Mm. they say that a healthy marriage, particularly a marriage, but even a long term partnership, it's not falling in love one time. It's falling in love multiple times with the different iterations of your partner, because ultimately you want someone's growing. All living things are either growing or dying, including the plant that I have not yet watered today, (laughs) but hopefully I will remember to before. All of them are either growing. (laughs) Shout out to Figaro. It's a fig plant. But um, amazing. Yeah. It's either growing or dying. And so, so look for someone who you feel is growing, Mm. um, because then that gives you room to grow. Um, but then also be aware that the person you love now is not going to be a hundred percent the same person you're going to need to love in a few years because life comes at you fast and it shapes you and it changes you and all of that stuff. And so I find when people leave that off their list, it automatically can put you in a you're setting yourself up for, for real struggle, um, or potential failure because similar to your friend who, or the person who, who did the sort of the app and website sort of analyzing like their list versus the butterflies. It's like what you think matters on that list. A lot of times you'll find out does not actually matter, um, in the end. So be open to love coming in a package that you didn't expect. Um, look for someone with a growth mindset and look for someone where you genuinely feel like you can stretch your arms as wide as you want. You can jump as high as you want and you don't feel caged with that person. You don't feel like they're putting you into some sort of small compartment compartment of who they think you are or who you should be. If you feel like you have to dim your light or crouch down in order to fit in their idea of you, then that is 100% not the person for you. A hundred and fifty percent. Yes. I love, love, love that answer. And I find that's why I was so lucky in the relationship that I'm in right now, where I am truly who I am. You know, mm-hmm. I always like laugh like warts and all, like it's this like mm-hmm. joke from mm-hmm. this TV show. Um, mm-hmm. because it's like I am loud, I'm wild, I'm crazy, I'm emotional, I'm a basket case, but it's who I am and I don't want to mm-hmm. change who I am. And mm-hmm. my partner doesn't want me to change who I am. My partner right. wants to grow with me, but mm-hmm. I, I love the, 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 you know, that you have to have the mindset of like, you have to grow and, and find different ways to fall in love throughout the time. Because I mean, let me tell you, pregnancy is a struggle. Postpartum yeah. is the biggest mm-hmm. struggle in the entire world. It, mm-hmm. it put such a toll on our marriage. Like I've never mm-hmm. thought could ever, you know, ruffle yeah. the feathers. Um, yeah. And you don't realize that these things happen and they mm-hmm. come at you like a, like a truck, yeah. you know, yeah. um, and it really tests you and it tests mm-hmm. your relationship and you want to make sure that the relationship is strong and willing to grow. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's mm-hmm. like, you know, like putty, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? That it'll, yeah, it'll go exactly. um, and reform and reshape. So mm-hmm. I absolutely love that. And now I want to ask, um, one of my final questions for you is, you know, since this is a mental health podcast mm-hmm. and the importance of sharing, you know, your, your mental health in the state mm-hmm. that you're in or a mental illness. I'm an open book. You can ask anything you want. Oh, good. <laughs> well, with dating, I feel like this is something that I've asked a few people who have been on, who have been, you know, in the, the kind of like, you know, marriage world and dating world and all that is, you know, it's very hard to know when to open up about a mental illness or open up mm-hmm. about your mental health struggles with mm-hmm. a stranger, you know, Mm-hmm. Most people are not like me that are like, blah, 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 blah about it. <laughs> um, and, you know, for me, I, I kept it hidden for a long time. And with my husband, it was the mm-hmm. second sentence that was out of my mouth when we met in mm-hmm. person. So mm-hmm. when do you think it's appropriate or like how can one – introduce that, you know, just like you were saying, you can write that you're an introvert, right? And that, mm-hmm. that that's been such an increase. How can you do that on a dating app, like such as Tinder mm-hmm. and say, you know, without it being like in your face, like I suffer for an anxiety disorder, blah, you know, I, yeah. I want it to be in a very cool, this is a part of me. It doesn't identify who I am, but this is, mm-hmm. this is something that's important to me on being mm-hmm. able to open with mental illness. Like what, what can we do? For, yeah, for that. there's it's it is very nuanced because I think it it varies per person, and this is all our individual journeys. I'd say a couple things come to mind. One being, if it's something that you do want, you don't know how, but you do want to really put up there, like even in your dating profile. I say humor softens a lot of things and connects us all. So in your short bio, it's okay to say something like, you know, 
you know, my, um, you know, something playful sort of like, uh, I've been told I have great accessories. My anxiety is one of them, but da, 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 da. Like you kind of, you're kind of playful. Wait, you're, that's brilliant. <laughs> you're kind of throwing it out there, but you're, and you're not harping on it, but you, you are sort of putting it out there initially so that anyone who just is like, oh no, I don't know how to handle that. Great. They're not wasting your time because they've already right. moved on. And anyone who does swipe right, it's like, okay, great there's an opportunity there, you know, like you've already kind of dropped the seed to explore that and further conversation. Mm -hmm. And then the other piece is when you really feel comfortable in peeling back the layers of yourself, it, you don't have to unwrap everything right off the bat. Like I didn't share with my husband that I had ADHD. Also, I didn't, I didn't even fully understand it. It certainly wasn't something that came up in the early dates. And it wasn't even that I was hiding it as much as when it did come up, it was just an organic part of the conversation. But I did share right. with him, I'm pretty sure on date two or three that, you know, I, I had a therapist and I did regular sessions and what we would talk about in those sessions. I mean, sure. and it got to the point early on in dating, even that I pretty much get off a call with my therapist and then talk to him be like, so this is what we talked about today. Like, yeah. so, yeah. um, you know, look for that person that makes you feel safe in that. And if you mm. ever find that you do share that part of yourself and it's not met in the way that you want to, please understand that the lack of understanding on their part is not a reflection of you. So mm. if someone is like, oh, well, I, I don't understand therapy or I don't understand this disorder or I, I can't mm. deal with that, that's not a reflection of you. That mm -hmm. just means that person isn't capable of meeting you where you are. And that doesn't make them bad, but it's okay. Like, don't, don't let that be the thing that makes you, makes you close up and go, well, I can't share because I tried sharing once and it was terrible. Or sure. I put it in my profile and I didn't get any matches. Like keep the same way you may go to a restaurant. I feel like this happened to us. Most of us at some point, there's been a time that you've tried a food that you did not like, but you did not That's go, true. well, I'm never going to eat again. There's no point. I can't eat because I just had some food that was terrible. And I'm not going to, no, you keep eating. Never. And you keep trying different things. And yeah. you, you have the things you like and the things you don't like, but you don't go, well, that's it. I tried it. That I'm done. Right. So sometimes because we feel so vulnerable in dating and relationships, which I get, that's our instinct is to go, well, I tried it, didn't work. So I'm never doing that again. Try not to do that because that would literally be like starving yourself because you tried one thing you didn't like. Right. Um, and so give yourself that space and grace, but humor helps soften things. And remember that you are layered, you are multifaceted. So you don't have to be careful of trauma dump. Like you don't have to take your whole life story and be like, they need to fully understand me tomorrow on the second day. Yes. No, yes. they can understand parts of you. And then later they can understand more parts of you. It's, it's more of a journey. No, I, I agree with that because I think that that is, it's a lot sometimes when people do trauma dump things. And sometimes mm -hmm. I catch myself doing that. I, I caught myself doing that a lot when I um, went through postpartum and all the stuff. Mm -hmm. because, and, and I didn't mean to it. I would say it to new moms and I'd be like, oh my God, I, I got to stop because that's not their mm -hmm. experience and they're not mm -hmm. going to have that experience. Mm -hmm. That was mine. Um, mm -hmm. So very, very key. And I absolutely love that. Well, Devin, I'm going to ask my final question that I ask everyone on the show. What mm -hmm. is your emotional support? My, uh, emotional support. It's, it's a couple of things. My therapist would say my dog, um, Aww. shout out to Brooklyn. It's true. I got him on real world funny enough. And he has been the greatest. Stop gift. it. Um, I did. I did. Oh. He's 15 now he's old and you know, rickety, but still oh. going. And I love him so very much. Um, you know, my other emotional support, uh, is, uh, therapy, good therapy has been super helpful and music. I find that in the darkest times or the moments that it feels hard to see the way forward for me, music and really listening to the words and being mindful of what I'm listening to in that moment. Now, when I'm having a good time, I might listen to some ratchet stuff. It's fine. Uh, but in the moment Which that I'm great. vulnerable, yes. <laughs> listening to just songs where the words are like, really food for the soul and having sometimes them on repeat repeat really is the lighthouse in a storm for mm -hmm. me. Um, and that's been true since I was a kid, uh, mm -hmm. since my parent, before my parents divorce and it holds, um, true to this day. And so I, knowing that about myself, I certainly lean into that, um, and try and keep it connected in my life in some way, because, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's never a straight path forward. It's a spiral, meaning like there will be great days and great times. And then you dip back down a little and then yeah. you come up and you dip down. And so just having as many tools in your arsenal, I think, at least for me has been, um, really helpful and, and supportive on my emotional journey. 
I love that all the tools in your arsenal. That's amazing. And it's so true. I think uh, it's so important to have so many tools in your toolbox. Like that is mm-hmm. what you do. You pull them out at different times and you get it, yep. you get it going. Oh my gosh. And Devin, how can everyone find you? Oh, uh, you can find me on my website, devinsimone.com. That's Devin with a Y, D-E-V-Y-N, Simone, S-I-M-O-N-E.com. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see my socials. I'm probably most active uh, on Instagram, but uh, I pop up on the others here and there too. And if you're a challenge watcher or you binge watch the challenge, then check out the official challenge podcast where we talk about, uh, you know, it's, it's a reality show. So there's all the craziness there, but there really is some inspiring stories of people in their own emotional, emotional journeys that occur within the house. And so, um, might be something fun to listen to. Oh, well, I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you.